some of the biggest worries people have when it comes to divorce, some things that we talked about, and I have these on notes because I don't want to forget these talking points. You said spousal support. There's three types. There's need-based, compensa uh, compensatory, compensatory based, yep. compensa and uh, contractual. contractual. Can you explain that? Okay. So I mentioned earlier that if you live together continuously for more than three years, it may crystallize a spousal support entitlement. If you're married, there's an automatic spousal support entitlement. But then the court analyzes the facts. You have to prove firstly that you're entitled to it on a number of bases. One can be contractual. You signed a cohab or you signed a marriage contract that says if we separate, party A will pay the following amounts to party B as spousal support. That's contractual support. You're enforcing the contract. You can also sign a cohab or a marriage contract that completely eliminates the obligation to pay any spousal support or constrains it or compartmentalizes it. Only so much for so long. You can get really creative ones that say, if we separate after a year, it's this much. Five years, it's this much. Ten years, it's this much. Almost like a seniority clause. It's as creative as you want to be. At the same time, you need to understand that the contractual obligations will bind you. The second type of spousal support is called needs-based. You live together in a relationship of permanence or marriage, generally for a longer period of time. You lived a certain lifestyle, that accustomed standard of living test that you hear about. You separate. One of you earns $250,000 a year. One of you earns $25,000 a year. Nobody took any time off work to have kids, everybody's working, everybody's healthy, but there's a vast disparity in your incomes. That's a needs-based claim because you have a need to have more income in order to enjoy a standard of living similar to the standard of living you enjoyed during marriage or lengthy cohabitation, so you get support from the higher earning spouse just to bring you closer to the standard. It's not 50-50, it's not equal. Then you get the compensatory model. The compensatory model is that very traditional, if I can pick on my mother and my father, God bless them. My mom and dad met later in life. Nobody had been married before. Very traditional, 1957. Only had one child, which is me. Thank heaven, no more siblings. And the day that my mom was pregnant, she quit her job at the bank, stayed home. My dad worked. He brought home the money. My mom was a very traditional homemaker. Had they separated after 25 years, my mom would have had the right to claim compensatory support to compensate her for the fact that wow. she gave up a job, economic opportunity, and income earning stream while my father went on to develop one. Compensatory also means that had three years later she gone and met, hell, Bill Gates, and went to live with him in Palo Alto, multi-billionaire, lots of money, she'd still get the support. She doesn't have any need anymore, but she's still being compensated for giving up that whole income earning stream and the wealth she could have accumulated. So you get into a long-term marriage or cohabitation where there's a compensatory claim. What it means in simple English is you're going to equalize incomes. The higher income earner is going to pay effectively the difference to make the lower income earner equal. Ouch. So those are situations where you want the okay. marriage contract, the cohab, if you're the higher income earner. If you're not the higher income earner, as Elmer Fudd would say, be very, very quiet.